Hello champs, welcome back. My name is Mohammad Sami and in this video we are going to have a look at using a spreadsheet application like Microsoft Excel to create business reports. Call them MIS or Management Information System reports if you will. Now I have collected some sample data that mimics a data file created from a transaction processing system like a sales software in a company. Most operation software maintain data in the, in the manner that is depicted in the samples here. Although the sample size is small, the idea itself can be applied to much larger sets of data that you might encounter in a true system. Also note that these techniques can be utilized for data reconciliation purposes as well. So production support guys, listen up. Now let's get on with it. First of all, we'll have a look at the transaction data that uh, we are going to use as a sample today. Now it contains product keys sales document number, the date in which the transaction was made, the channel, the quantity, the unit, the revenue earned against the sale of that quantity and the currency in which it, the transaction was made. You can see that the product keys are maintained in a manner which is efficient for storing inside a database but do not generally make sense to common users. So what we need to do is we need to get the text out of uh, text for that product in order to understand it better and when you actually submit a report to a higher management you would want the product's name ideally instead of the key being supplied in the reports so for that let's go ahead and massage our data a little bit to make it more presentable we're going to use a function inside ms excel called the vlookup for that purpose now just beside the product column let's create or insert another column called product description And before we start using the VLOOKUP, let's just have a look at what kind of products that our company sells. For example, the product ID PDS01 actually represents a notebook called SPD1. The product key PDS02 represents a notebook called SPD2. Similarly, 04 represents a USB adapter, so on and so forth. So let's just try and get this product descriptions into our raw data first. So for that, type in your formula or the function name that is we look up we look up open a parenthesis give it the first lookup value that is the key for your lookup which will be your product id followed by a comma the table array from which that you are going to look up that is nothing but your product table there you go now you can see that PDS07 is actually a camera connector. Let's just cross check if it is correct. PDS07 is a camera connector. Great. Now you can go ahead and apply the same formula to all the cells. Go ahead and drag the formula for all the columns or rows rather for all the rows. There you go. Now you can see that the formula has adapted to the key that it is supposed to fetch data for like you can see we look up of a4 a5 a6 a7 the array is constant in this case now that we have our product description let's just try and get you know let's say uh, you want a report which gives you sales by month of the year so the date is not going to much help you much so what you can do is create your own master data for the date and use the same VLOOKUP function to get the month and the year of that date. You could you could also go ahead and uh, try and use a complex formula by extracting the day, uh, the month number from the middle and the year from the end, but I just find it easier to do a VLOOKUP. So I've created a master table for all my dates where the date has a month and a year maintained against it. Let's just go ahead and do a VLOOKUP against this table. Let's just go ahead and get our month year using the VLOOKUP again. So equals VLOOKUP of the key, that is the calendar day, followed by your calendar day, calendar master array. Again, just remove the numbers at the end of the column names, comma. You need the second column, that is column B. So that's number two and 
and one, which is an exact match. So there you go, that's July 2007 for you. Now you can just drag the formula again. Okay, there you go. So you have all of it now in there. Now that it looks nice, and now that we have massaged the data quite a bit, we'll just go ahead and see how what kind of a report we can create on top of it. Go to the report tab, and we are going to use something called as a pivot table in order to create our report. So click on the pivot table option and it'll ask you for a table range. So go back to your transaction data and select the table range, the entire transaction data that you have. And say OK. There you go. Now you can just go ahead and drop your row labels. And let us say you want to look, have a look at revenue, sum of revenue. If you want to change the function, the aggregation function here, you can just go ahead and select the value field. You can use count, average, max, min, product, stuff like that. So I'm going to use sum in this example. So there you go. You can you have a nice report now wherein you can see how much revenue you, is generated out of sales from which product. Let us say you want to have a look at uh, month-wise sales in a year. So you can now go ahead and drag in your month year. There you go. You have August sales at 72,000 or rather is it 7,29,634. So that's your revenue for August and from the sale of uh, these products. You can even uh, change certain design options to make it look more like a report. Uh, for example, if you want to show it in a tabular form, you can do that. And you can play around with it and explore uh, you know, different functions for yourself. Thank you very much.